gently now wherever you are if you're in the water it's time to emerge and to be dry remembering all that you've seen felt and heard and feeling very refreshed all over the tea if you are lying or sitting it's time to stand remembering all that you've seen felt and heard and feeling very refreshed alert and keen as you are in the healing clearing and notice that each and every one of us surround that body of water and you notice that your healing breath starts to expand to touch each and every one. And we become one healing breath, one healing breath. We direct this healing breath to the healing box, to all the souls that are making transition in and out of this world, and all the institutes of health, that healing is being guided and maintained in each and every one of them. All the heads of state that peace is the journey and destination, all those are affected by the winds, the rains, the snows, the movement of the earth, and all those that are affected by the, the virus that's going on, that they are healed and, and maintaining that healing energy. And as you notice your healing clearing and healing body of water, and you as you move back towards your path, noticing anything changed, added, or taken away, as you move down your path, your mental and physical consciousness becomes aware remembering all that you've seen, felt, and heard, and feeling very refreshed, alert, and keen. As your mental and physical consciousness becomes aware, remembering all that you've seen, felt, and heard, and feeling very refreshed, alert, and keen. And when your eyes are completely open, open your eyes to know that you are healed. <clears throat> Thank you, Reverend David, for that beautiful meditation. Now is the time that we have our speaker today. Our speaker, every time our Reverend Marsha speaks, she speaks exactly what our chapel stands for, what we um, hope for in, you know, teaching what we do, and. Uh, we can't wait to hear what she has to say. Reverend Marsha. Oh, thank you, Reverend Angie. For those very kind words. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. So the topic for this month is awakening. And for this week, we look at awakening from a perspective of authority. And when I contemplate these two words, awakening and authority, I feel a really personal connection to the combination of these two words. People are drawn to United Fellowship Chapel for a lot of different reasons. And when I was first drawn here to the chapel, it was because I had experienced an awakening a couple of years before that, 
that was so profound, I knew that my life was forever changed. And I knew that I needed teachers to help me find my way. And a friend had recommended that I call Reverend David to see if he could help me. Through attending a multitude of classes and the seminary and teaching some classes here, I was able to understand my awakening experience and find the authority within myself to finally own my own power. So the combination of awakening from a perspective of authority is kind of like the story of my life. And I look at the different perspectives of awakening that are being discussed this month, and they all resonate really profoundly with me. Ignitement, birth, authority, knowing God within, and the voice of God. So today I talk about my awakening and how I found the authority <clears throat> within myself to become a more empowered person as I move forward in life. To explain what happened during my awakening, I kind of need to give a little bit of background. Uh, when I was about nine years old, I had an experience that terrified me. I was in my bedroom reading a book and starting to get very relaxed. And as I was laying there in bed, I suddenly felt and heard an energy buzzing feeling in my head. And as this happened, the room changed colors to a strange shade of gray. And I also realized I was frozen, kind of paralyzed, unable to move or speak. And then I saw a group of people gathered in a semicircle around me. They all wore gray hooded cloaks and I couldn't see their faces. And I was terrified. I wanted to call out to my mom to come and help me, but I couldn't do anything. And then from the middle of the semicircle came another figure, a darker color of gray, also in a hooded cloak. And this figure was bigger than any of the others. It came forward and moved toward me and I wanted to run. I wanted to scream. I couldn't do anything. And the hooded person reached a hand out toward me. And I just knew that these were dead people coming to get me and take me to where dead people go. And I was, I was desperate to get away. I kept trying to wake up, but nothing seemed to work. And then finally, in my desperation, I realized that I couldn't wake up because I wasn't asleep. So I forced myself to relax. And as I relaxed, I was then able to wake up. Well, that experience when I was nine taught me to begin blocking those energy feelings in my head. It taught me to work on blocking the people from coming. I was totally convinced that someday I wouldn't be on guard and those people would come and take me and I would just, I would disappear. Nobody would ever know what happened to me. And I worked at all those blocking techniques for many, many years. I sometimes still got into that frozen, paralyzed state throughout my life, but I got really good at getting back out of it before I saw the, um, any people. I never told my parents or anyone else until many, many years later. Um, I had learned as a very young child not to talk about the things that I saw or heard. I was told from a really young age that I had a very vivid imagination and that I was overly sensitive. I had already been told that none of the things that I said that I experienced were true. They were all dreams or imagination. I had seen translucent type people who seemed like lovely grandparent types that would visit sometimes and disappear. I saw an angel when I was five and I called her the tooth fairy because that was my little girl way of describing her. My family, as loving and wonderful as they were, they didn't understand these things and they laughed it all off as Marsha's imagination or Marsha's dreams. So I just kept this terror experience to myself. And I was a pretty nervous child. 
Learning to block my energy feelings before they increased in intensity became a way of protecting myself. Then about 20 years ago, I read a book about a woman who had similar experiences. She was scared too, but through a series of circumstances, she was helped by some really wonderful metaphysical teachers who very gently guided her and helped her to understand her experiences. She eventually began working as a psychic medium and a healer and eventually an author. Well, I didn't know exactly what to think about all this, but I decided that maybe, just maybe, what I was blocking wasn't something bad at all. Maybe it was just something I didn't understand yet. And so I decided to begin a journey. I went to a, um, went to a psychic fair and spoke to someone who suggested that I start meditating. Um, she said to do that about 10 minutes a day. And I had no idea how to do that and I was still pretty scared. So I got a few books on how to meditate and I wrote to the author of the book and, um, that I had read that had started this whole adventure of mine. And in her book, she had said that, um, that she prays for protection. So I wanted to know how to protect myself before I would start this meditation thing. So she did write back and she told me of a prayer that she said when she prayed for protection. So I kept reading that prayer over and over and over again, trying to make sure that I could remember those words. And one night, very soon after that, I woke up in the middle of the night and I found myself trying to remember the words to that prayer. I kept trying to think of the right words and I was kind of upset with myself that I couldn't remember the words right. And then it happened. All of a sudden, I was in this huge funnel of swirling light that was a brilliance that it just, it can't be described in human terms. And the words to that prayer, they all changed. And I could hear words booming in words that I was familiar with. And the, that booming voice, I knew, absolutely, I knew that to be the voice of God. And the voice was my voice. I was in such awe of where I was. And I remember thinking, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for my entire life. And now I'm going to know all the answers. And I felt myself going deeper and deeper into this swirling light. And then I had a thought, wait a minute, where is it that I'm going? I have a husband, I have a son. I don't know where it is that I'm going. And so I said inside of myself, I'm not ready for this. I need to go back. And immediately I was back in my bed at home. No struggle, no being paralyzed. Just as soon as I said I wanted to go back, I was back. And it was at that moment that I realized where God was. It was then that I realized that God wasn't out there somewhere, but within me and within each and every person and all that power of the universe is within us, not somewhere else. That moment sent me on a journey of self-discovery and it eventually led me here to this chapel to study with Reverend David. And yes, that moment, that one moment changed my life. I haven't had another experience quite like that one again, and I may or may not ever have another one like it. What I do know now is that I had that experience in that way for a reason. It was, it was for my highest and best good to have that experience. And I had expressed a willingness to open to myself with good intention. 
I've also found that those gray cloaked people who I was so afraid of as a child are actually a group of teachers and healers. And I no longer have any fear of them or the energy feelings that I get. I'm so immensely grateful that I've continued breaking down the blocks that I so very carefully built around myself for so long. But my experience is far from unique. There are hundreds of books that people have written that describe similar experiences or near-death experiences or out-of-body experiences. I sometimes hear people talk of their experiences and I, I sometimes think, wow, I wish I could have an experience like that. But what I know now is that every moment is an awakening moment. Every moment, we have a new opportunity to learn something new, something new about ourselves that helps us, encourages us to try something new, think something different, meet someone new. What I learned here at the chapel is that I'm the authority in my life. I'm the one who decides what I think, say, and do. Studying metaphysical principles gives us the basics and guidance, but how we apply those principles is an individual choice. You choose on a daily basis <clears throat> what you're going to think, say, and do. You choose how you react to the situations that you experience in life. You are your authority to choose a path of high value or not. <clears throat> you have the choice to use your authority to choose the path that's for your highest and best good. Awakening is igniting. Awakening is birth and rebirth. Awakening is daring to think and then creating something new from that thought. Awakening is being willing to be open to new ideas, new thoughts, new words, new actions. Awakening is being willing to meet new people, go to new places, bring new things into life that help you to move forward on a path that brings harmony and balance into your life even if you have to do it on Zoom. Authority is the power within you to move forward. For a long time, I kept wanting to have another huge experience. I actually, I thought that that was my goal. But now I know that the awakenings that are the most important are the small nudgings that Keep me moving forward in a positive direction in life. The concepts that are taught here about cause and effect, body representations, and mind powers, they seem very simple. But in truth, they're the power of the universe. Those simple teachings are keys to living an empowered life. I think the biggest awakening for me was to understand that it's okay to be me. I don't have to conform to what others think in order to be okay. I can understand and accept others for what they believe, and I can also be confident in my own inner knowing. You each have that amazing creating energy, God light within you, all that infinite strength and wisdom right inside of you to guide you as you walk this earth plane. I define awakening differently now because I know that it's the awareness of the subtle changes and nudgings and signals that we get every day that are important. Before I had my big awakening experience, I was actually led to read the right book at the right time. Had I ignored those nudgings, I might still be perfecting my great talent at blocking all my connections to my inner guidance, my inner teacher. 
the encouragement that I found here at the chapel was a birth and rebirth, an awakening of my inner authority. I found encouragement through Reverend David. It was a number of years ago, and Reverend Angie has really picked up on all of those, those teachings. Uh, I learned to value myself and to get to know myself so that I can better understand the world around me. The past few months have had their own unique challenges. But thank goodness for the knowing that we receive through study of metaphysical principles. You have direction. You have the authority to remind yourself to change focus. You have the power to create thoughts that are happy, healthy, and wealthy. There's an awakening within you that can be the birth of something miraculous in your life. Allow the miracle that is you to blossom and bloom in the way that feels right for you. Take the little steps of change that lead you to your goals. Honor the awakening of the value and authority that is you. God bless you all. Thank you, Reverend Marcia. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And now is the time for our love offering. And we'll place it between our hands and give it a blessing before we do. Mother, Father, God, as we place between our hands that which you have ignited, we give to the source that what you have given to put into effect the law of tenfold return to those who give freely and from the heart. Amen. We have it one by one, if you guys don't mind. And then everyone at Zoom, thank you so much for your donations. And if you don't know how to donate, you can always go to unitedfellowshipchapel.org and hit the donate button. <laughs> thank you. Now is the time for our mediums to give messages. When the messenger asks for permission to come to you, your clear and strong voice says, yes. <laughs> it helps to establish the energetic connection link with your guides and higher self. And our first medium will be Christy. <laughs> Three, please. Oh, that's it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> okay. Um, William, is it? Yes. May I come to you? Yes. So, William, as I come into your presence, I'm experiencing this sense of of inviting, um, like it's time to be inviting the the animal spirit guides for each of your chakras. Um, it's as if I they're already in, they're here and they're just waiting for you to acknowledge them. And I leave that with you. Yvonne, may I come to you? Yes. So Yvonne, as I come into your presence today, what I'm feeling is that you have, um, you have shown abilities and you have gathered um, your talents and there awaits you the opportunity to walk on the earth absorbing energy and strength from other sources. And it's time to do that. The elementals, the all the unseen. And, and like with William and his animal spirit guides, these are ready for you. They are everywhere. 
in the world. And so op open yourself now. It's time to open yourself to the amazing power and bring it in and live from that. And I leave that with you. Marsha, may I come to you? Yes, please. So Marsha, as I come into your presence, I am just filled with this great warmth and, and a lot of gratitude for all of your beautiful words today, for the honesty and your inspiration. And I, I can see all around you the, the guides that you have and the, the knowingness that radiates around you. And just as an affirmation of what you already know, I just want, I just want to thank you for that and, and also say that it's um, clear that it's just all going to grow for you and be much more powerful as time goes along. And it will continue to inspire many. Thank you. I'll leave it with you. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Our next medium will be Reverend Marsha. Four, please. Can you see that four? Four? Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Irene, may I come to you? Yes, please do. Irene, as I connect with your energy, what I'm feeling Now I'm getting a um, I'm getting a feeling of reaching out. This, is, this feels really emotional. It feels like an emotional reaching out, and it feels like um, you know this feels like a combination of that uh, someone that you want to reach out to, and then also um, giving this like embracing energy to yourself. And yeah, the way that it's coming, the way that it's coming to me, it feels like when you really embrace this nurturing toward yourself, you'll have the way of uh, reaching out and offering that to someone else who is in need of it. And, um, and it just, it feels like a really huge spiritual bear hug and uh, feels really, really good. So um, just spend a few minutes, just uh, take a few minutes to like meditate into a feeling of embracing of yourself. And then uh, some situation is gonna come up and you'll be able to handle it with ease. And I'd like to leave that with you, God bless you. Thank you so much, Marcia. You're welcome. Ed, may I come to you? Uh, yes, Marsha, please. And as I connect with your energy, what I'm feeling, okay, I'm getting a feeling in. Um, it's like right in the third eye and um and it's kind of like um what i'm feeling like i want to do <clears throat> is like um is like reach up and kind of like massage that area in the the third eye and then take some deep breaths and and kind of blow it out and Wow, that just, it just sounds like it's kind of like a little exercise to um, kind of rejuvenate that area a little bit. And that's, um, that's the way that it's coming to me. Um,
and well, I feel really light um, and good. I just feel good after after doing that. So um, yeah, try that. Try that a, a few times this week and see how it feels. And I think that you'll be pleased with uh, with that. I'd like to leave that with you. God bless you. Thank you. Um, do you do you happen to see if uh, I acted re um, appropriately when that area was damaged on Tuesday? Oh, I. You know, I I just left that with you, and the information that I got was to just kind of massage that area and. Um, and do some breathing, and um, I think that that's that's where to start. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Bob, may I come to you? Yes, please do. Bob, as I connect with your energy, what I'm feeling okay I'm getting I'm getting a feeling like it feels like I'm walking um, I'm just being encouraged to walk I don't know if that's something if that's an exercise that you do very often but um, but I'm just um, it feels like I'm taking a walk right now. And um, a little bit, it feels like I'm walking outside, like in, um, in trees, in nature. And it just, it feels really good. So um, I think that's what you're being encouraged to do is to walk out in nature some and, um, and see how that feels to you. It, it sure feels great to me right now. So um, I'd like to leave that with you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Reverend Barsha. Oh, was that it? Was that four? Oh, my apologies, you did three. One more. Oh, well, Reverend Angie, may I come to you? You may, yes, thank you. <laughs> Angie, as I connect with your energy, what I'm feeling Oh, well, I'm getting a really strong feeling um, in, you know, this is kind of interesting because a lot of times when I get a feeling about communication, I get it in my, in my throat, but I'm getting this right in my mouth. I, it, it feels like there are words that you're wanting to say, and they're, um, it's like, it's already coming through in your area of communication, but it's not coming out of your mouth. So there are some things that when, when you really feel that it needs to be said, say it, just go ahead and say it because there is a lot of power in that. And I just, um, I just feel a little bit, um, a little bit of holding back. So, um, yeah, go for it. It's, that's your power. And I'd like to leave that with you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Reverend Marsha. Our next rep, our next video will be Reverend David. <laughs> One, two, yes. Carolyn, may I come to you? Please do. Thank you. All right. The, the, the symbol I see for you is, is, is clarity. Uh, and, and I feel it's going to be very active this upcoming week for you. Uh, if there are some, uh, some concepts you're, you're, you're still sort of trying to get the whole uh, answer to, and, and, and it's going to uh, ignite within you what it is. Uh, and, and nobody else is going to be able to, con to confirm it but you. 
So don't try to confirm it by anybody else. Just stick with you and, and work on that, uh, and you'll see things happening much more pleasant for you. I'll leave it with you, and God bless you. Glenn, may I come to you? Yes, please do. Glenn, as I, as I come into your presence today, uh, I, I see the symbol of, of order here with you, and, and order has a couple fun functions, and one is to adjust. And, I, and, and when I get the adjusting in there, it tells me that you're, you're moving in, in awareness, and the awareness that, that, that you're becoming more aware of, uh, and, and you'll be noticed that some of the people who you are associating right now are not going to understand the language that you speak, even though you're speaking the same language. And let that be an indication that there's other people starting to come into your life that will understand the words that you say, because there's, there's a, a tremendous amount of knowledge that's being ignited through, through the experience that you have, that will, and those people who are coming into you are going through the same things you went through. So be free to give those out there. Uh, I'll leave that with you, and God bless you. Thank you. Deb, may I come to you? Yes, please. Okay. Deb, as I, as I touch your, your uh, 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 presence here today, uh, there's uh, some uh, enlightening uh, uh, information that's being ignited within you, and, and the, the skills that you do, when you are in the middle of doing your, your, your healing and everything, you're going to get ideas uh, of what the, the, the people are going through, uh, and, and, they, and they may seem strange, uh, but give those ideas out to them, and they'll be very beneficial for that. And, and I see that the, the skill that you have, uh, the art that, that you have in, in, your, in your healing is becoming more and more stronger and more confident. Uh, and, and you're going to get more, when you get done with each, with each person you do with, take, take a few moments and just ask yourself, what else did I learn from this? You know, what else is coming up from this? And you'll get more information on, on, on the healing energies that, that you're going to be doing in the next two to three weeks. Uh, and I leave that with you, and God bless you. Thank you. One more, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Huh? Never mind. Huh? Never mind. I know you do. Catherine, may I come to you? Yes, Mary. Catherine, as, a, as I come into your presence today, I, I, I see some energy being ignited within you. Uh, and it's called vitality. Uh, and, and they're saying, don't use it all up in one day. Uh, there's about three, three days coming up here where you're going to, you can use more vitality than, 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 is, than is, uh, it's in existence right now. But it's going to be there every time you do it. So when you feel exhausted, you get some rest, and the next day, that vitality will be ignited within you and you'll be able to complete the things that, that, that are in front of you to do. And, and you'll be very successful at that. And I leave that with you and God bless you. Oh, okay. right. That's four, right? Thank you, Reverend David. I'll be the next medium. Christy, may I come to you? Yes, please. So you're going to be doing walks, and each walk is another chapter. So each walk has an intention there, a purpose. So when you're choosing to where you're going to walk or hike or anything like that, focus on where that particular area is going to be because that energy is going to create like a, a vacuum for you. It's going to, it's going to, you're going to feel it when you go there, like where you want to be and what location due to what they're going to be delivering to you during that walk. So, you know, having something either with you, if you feel that you want to, you know, jot something down or just something to remember it by, but it'll definitely be something, you know, more profound that you won't forget. So just trust yourself and know it's inside and that it is coming. And you're just going to keep this ongoing. It's like, um, because this is such a peaceful um, space and um, alone time or quiet time, 
that's where it will be coming from. I leave that with you. Blessings to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see. Reverend Michael, may I come to you? Yes, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> so um, you've got, you know, the ancestry workings with you right now. And uh, this is a very strong linkage, a lineage, of things that they knew that you also knew. You were a part of them from way back. So knowing this, knowing that you have been in those lifetimes for so many years with these um, beings, you can communicate very deeply and closely with them. And they really want your attention right now. So in that quiet time, spend it with them because they're going to be showing you some really important things that you'll be doing in the future and for that lineage. And I'll leave that with you. Blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend David, may I come to you? Please do. So um, there are three, there's like a whole bunch of threes all around and, and we know that um, your number nine is in, is in all the time, you're always with it. Um, there's three of threes. So there's um, a condensation of the nines going on. And so that, that is a true um, understanding of what we have going on here. <laughs> And, uh, but what I'm really getting is you're completing something from all these years and all the teachings. There's a completion of something that's coming and uh, the completion of the workings, um, it continues on. However, there is something very profound that will um, be given to others that is going to help them feel of completion too. And I'll leave that with you. Blessings you. to you. You're welcome. Has everyone got a message? Just give me a nod there if you don't mind. Yep. Okay. Bob, you got one? Okay. Okay. I just want to thank each and every one of you for coming to our service today. And we will... We normally stand and hold hands, but we can stand if you like. And you guys can stand too if you want. <laughs> we'll keep you on mute just because it gets really funny. And uh, we'll sing Let There Be Love. And I will share it on the screen for you. Give me one second, Christy.
Mother, Father, God, we give thanks for your presence in each and every one. We ask for your infinite light of protection to be with us as we go on our path. So the highest and best will manifest when we meet those on our passage that we share the love that is so abundant. We give thanks for this day. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. There we go. You can all mute, unmute yourselves if you like. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have Bye, a good everybody. one. Bye. Bye. Have a good week. Have a good one. Have a good one. Have a good one. Thanks for the music, Christy. Bye bye. Thanks for the music, Christy. Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey, Christy. Oh, my. I haven't seen you for ages, so it's good to see you. I'm hiding. Bye, Andy. Bye, Andy. Bye. Bye. Bobby says hi. Just a little bit. How was your sister? Huh?